Once defeated in the race for NASA's commercial crew contract against Boeing's Starliner, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has made a stunning comeback after nearly a decade of relentless development. Now, it has successfully grabbed NASA's attention. With just one successful test flight this year, it could crush Starliner and even directly compete with SpaceX's Dragon. So, how will this unfold? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Back in 2011, when NASA ended its space shuttle program, Dream Chaser became one of the most anticipated vehicles of the time. It was designed by Sierra Space, and the design was inspired by NASA's HL-20 personnel launch system, an experimental space plane concept developed back in the 1990s. Similar to SpaceX's Dragon, Dream Chaser also comes in two versions, the Dream Chaser cargo system, an uncrewed vehicle designed to deliver supplies to the ISS, which is expected to make its debut later this year, and a crewed version set to launch in 2026. However, the road to this point hasn't been easy for Dream Chaser. In 2014, it faced tough competition from SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing's Starliner and was dropped from NASA's commercial crew program. Rather than abandoning the project, Sierra shifted Dream Chaser's focus to cargo transport. In 2016, NASA selected Dream Chaser for the CRS-2 contract, valued at over $1 billion. Nearly a decade later, that investment is paying off, with development moving at full speed, allowing Dream Chaser to outpace its rival, the Starliner. Tenacity, the first cargo variant, is scheduled to make its debut in May 2025 on the SSC Demo-1 mission, kicking off Sierra's six-flight series under NASA's CRS-2 contract. Originally slated for completion by December 2024, delays from the COVID-19 pandemic and technical issues with Dream Chaser pushed the timeline back, prompting NASA to extend the contract deadline to 2030. Recently, NASA has been pushing even harder for the development of tenacity, especially after Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo spacecraft ran into serious issues. Specifically, the pressurized cargo module for the NG-22 Cygnus resupply mission was found to be damaged during transit from the supplier to Northrop Grumman, so it won't be repaired in time to carry out the mission, which was originally scheduled for launch in June. NASA has confirmed that the next Cygnus mission will be NG-23, slated for no earlier than September this year. In the meantime, NASA's already got a backup plan in place. If NG-22 can't make it, they'll shift things around for the next Dragon flight. That's SPX-32, SpaceX's 32nd commercial resupply mission to the ISS. Instead of sending up a bunch of science experiments like they usually do, this one would focus more on crew supplies and essential hardware to keep the station running smoothly. This is also the reason NASA's strategy from the very beginning has been to invest in the development of multiple spacecraft, including Dream Chaser, Starliner, Dragon, Cygnus, and others. The aim is to ensure a diverse range of options for future space missions. The goal is twofold. First, to have reliable backup options if something goes wrong with one vehicle, and second, to prevent any single company from having too much control over access to space. For example, if SpaceX's Dragon became the only vehicle capable of reaching the International Space Station, NASA would end up heavily dependent on a single private provider. That kind of reliance could be risky, not just logistically, but also financially, in scheduling, and for long-term planning. By supporting multiple spacecraft, NASA ensures greater flexibility, encourages healthy competition, and strengthens the overall resilience of the spaceflight system. So, it's easy to understand why NASA has been focusing more on Dream Chaser lately. On December 5th last year, NASA and Sierra Space conducted a critical simulation exercise to prepare for Dream Chaser's first flight. Jeremy Owen, Chief of the Flight Director Office at Sierra Space, said, Today's training simulation was a critical milestone in the preparation of the joint Sierra Space and NASA flight control teams that will fly the upcoming Dream Chaser mission to the ISS. Tenacity has undergone a series of rigorous tests to ensure it's ready for the challenges of space. First, at the Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio, engineers placed the spacecraft and its cargo module, Shooting Star, on the world's most powerful vibration table, simulating the intense forces it will face during launch on the Vulcan Centaur rocket. Next, the spacecraft was tested in a thermal vacuum chamber, 
where it was subjected to temperatures ranging from minus 100 degrees Celsius to over 120 degrees Celsius, ensuring it could handle the extremes of space. Engineers also checked if it could power up, cool its systems, and transmit data from its sensitive scientific equipment. Finally, at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, NASA and Sierra Space conducted acoustic and electromagnetic tests and completed the installation of heat shield tiles for re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The testing didn't stop there. On February 6th, Sierra posted on X that JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui had joined a Dream Chaser simulation the day before, practicing how to operate the spacecraft in orbit ahead of his mission to the ISS. This really shows how much effort NASA and Sierra Space have put into ensuring tenacity works safely and efficiently. If everything goes as planned, it could be a serious competitor to SpaceX's Dragon in the race to supply the International Space Station. To really see just how much better Dream Chaser is, we'll have to wait for its test flight next month. According to the plan, Dream Chaser's first flight will include on-orbit demonstrations to prove the spacecraft's reliability for future missions. This will be Dream Chaser's first launch on a Vulcan rocket with the Centaur upper stage, proving its potential as both a cargo and future crew vehicle. It's also the first real-world test of the SSRMS and Canadarm2 for docking with the ISS. Teams at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Johnson Space Center in Houston, and Dream Chaser's own mission control in Louisville, Colorado, will monitor the entire flight. Sierra space pilots will oversee the spacecraft at launch, then hand things over to the company's ground operations team at NASA Kennedy after landing. If this mission goes well, it's going to send a clear message to Boeing. If you don't keep pushing and improving, Sierra's going to catch up and even pass you, no matter how far ahead you think you are. Meanwhile, Starliner, once the front runner over Dream Chaser, has been stuck in delay after delay making people question whether it still has a future in America's crewed space program. NASA's commercial crew program has invested up to $4.2 billion in Boeing's Starliner. But despite all that investment, development has faced delays, technical problems, and a string of setbacks over the years. Take its first uncrewed test flight back in December 2019. Starliner couldn't dock with the ISS because its internal clock was off. That small glitch threw off the mission timing, forcing NASA and Boeing to call off the docking and bring the spacecraft home early. Next was the second test flight, set for August 2021, but it got scrubbed just hours before liftoff when engineers discovered several stuck fuel valves in the propulsion system. Then came the first crewed flight test in June 2024, and yes, more problems. Engineers found five helium leaks in the propulsion pressurization system, Moreover, 5 out of 28 RCS thrusters had issues. Some Teflon valves likely overheated and popped loose, disrupting fuel flow. Of course, in any field, especially rocket and spacecraft development, failure is part of the process. But if these issues keep dragging on, Starliner might not be ready in time before the ISS retires in 2030. By contrast, Dream Chaser has been making steady and promising progress. While Starliner's delays and technical issues have eroded public confidence, Dream Chaser continues advancing steadily toward its debut mission. Both have faced setbacks, but Dream Chaser appears to have a much clearer trajectory. With six ISS cargo flights already scheduled and a successful simulation test at Kennedy Space Center, it's quickly gaining ground and might even outpace Starliner. In terms of design and operation, Dream Chaser and Starliner represent two distinct philosophies. Dream Chaser's lifting body structure and runway landing capability offer clear advantages. Greater landing flexibility, smoother re-entry, and faster, easier recovery. That gentle return also makes it ideal for transporting sensitive cargo like scientific samples or delicate equipment. With a spacious 33 cubic meter cabin accommodating up to seven astronauts, it's built for both cargo transport and future crewed missions. Dream Chaser's Tenacity version can carry up to 5,500 kilograms of cargo to the ISS, more than five times what Boeing's Starliner can handle, which maxes out around 1,000 kilograms. That makes Dream Chaser a true cargo workhorse. Starliner, with its traditional capsule design focused on proven reliability like SpaceX's Dragon, 
just doesn't offer the same operational flexibility Dream Chaser brings to the table. One of the biggest advantages, but also a major risk, of a spacecraft like Starliner is that it can land on solid ground. A good example of this type of landing is what happened during Blue Origin's NS-31 mission on April 14th, when their all-women crew touched down using parachutes and airbags. Now, like I said, this kind of landing does come with risks, even if they're rare. If the parachute system fails to deploy, the spacecraft could hit the ground hard, and that would be extremely dangerous for the astronauts on board. That's why ocean landings are generally considered safer in the event of a malfunction, since water can absorb a lot more of the impact. In contrast, Dream Chaser is completely different. With its ability to land on runways like a large airplane, it can land at virtually any airport on Earth, saving time and improving transportation efficiency. Additionally, Dream Chaser doesn't need to splash down in the ocean to dissipate heat. As it's equipped with 2,000 advanced 10x10-inch thermal protection system heat shield tiles, similar to those on Starship, these tiles protect the spacecraft from extreme heat, reaching up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry, making it not only safer, but also faster and more efficient in completing missions. Right now, Sierra's clearly on the right track, and honestly, it wouldn't be a surprise if their spacecraft keeps getting even better in the future. The delay of tenacity was just a minor setback in Sierra Space's bigger plans. While perfecting the spacecraft for ISS resupply missions, the company is also focused on the Orbital Reef Project, a commercial space station expected to launch by the decade's end. Dream Chaser could play a key role in transporting cargo and astronauts to this station and others, including private ones like SpaceX's Starship, which could potentially become a space station. Dream Chaser resembles a mini space shuttle and is shaping up to be a serious rival to SpaceX's Dragon, something Starliner hasn't quite achieved. Unlike capsules like Crew Dragon or Starliner, which rely on steep descents and parachutes, Dream Chaser features a unique lifting body design that allows it to glide smoothly through the atmosphere instead of just dropping straight down. This makes re-entry smoother, spreads out the heat, and reduces the G-forces. While Dragon or Starliner can hit up to 6 Gs, basically 6 times your body weight is pushing down on you, Dream Chaser only pulls about 1.5 Gs. That's way easier on the body, which is huge for longer missions or for people who aren't professional astronauts like future space tourists flying with Sierra. With these advantages, Dream Chaser is set to revolutionize space travel, offering a more comfortable and accessible experience for a new generation of explorers. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.